Thanks for joining us for this overview of Octane with Jira. Today we'll cover integration options that you have. We'll touch on two different components. One is being able to configure the flow of data between Octane and Jira using Connect Core, and the other is the Octane Quality plugin for Jira. So you can see test coverage on your different stories and item types from the Jira perspective. Let's start by logging into Jira. Uh, we want to take a look at what custom types, what types we're using in our project. So in my sample today, I'm going to use the standard types, bug, uh, story, etc. And then we'll set up a custom type as well. So here's my project. I've already got some data in it. You can see I'm using about three different types in what I've built so far. These include story, task, documentation bug, and bug. Documentation bug being uh, the custom bug type I've created. We'll need to account for these types on the Octane side um, once we're syncing that information. So I'm going to log into Octane. And we'll go right into the administration area for the space. Several things we'll need to do in here. First, we need to create a couple of lists. Um, I'm going to create one list for custom defect types since we're using documentation bugs and bugs. Um, I'll give it an appropriate name and list all the different types that I may be using in JIRA. You can do the same thing for different story types. Today we're just using one type, um, but the process would be the exact same way. Now using those lists, we'll create uh, new fields on the different entities we're using. So in defects in Octane, we'll need a couple of things. Um, first of all, we'll need a space uh, to simply hold the JIRA ID. So we'll add that in here and we'll call it the JIRA key UDF as in JIRA key user defined field. And we'll just make it a string field. This is going to hold that JIRA ID assigned from the JIRA side. The other thing that we'll need in defects uh, for today is a field to set or hold that custom type since we're using two different bug types in JIRA. So we'll add in a new list field here. I'm going to call it the JIRA defect type. And we'll specify that custom defect type list we created where we listed out the different um, options. We'll close that. You need to do the same thing on user story. So again, we'll create a new field just to hold the key of our uh, Jira user stories. Again, just a string field. And we'll also need a field if we were using custom story types besides just user story, um, we would add that in as well, just like we did custom defect types to hold that list. There may be some considerations you need to make to the workflow to account for bi-directional or unidirectional updates to status. Um, we'll table that for now, but just know that that's uh, available. The other thing we need to, need to do in Octane administration while we're here, create API keys. We need two of them. We'll need one for connect, that's setting up the back and forth data flow. Um, so we'll come in, create a key using space admin privileges. And we'll do the same thing for the JIRA plugin. And remember to take down the client ID in secret. For this one, you can use Reviewer or Integration Bridge. At this point, we'll move back over to JIRA and let's go ahead and set up the um, Octane plugin so that we can see our test coverage. So I'm just going to log in as admin. Depending on what version of JIRA you're using, um, it may be called something slightly different. My version is called um, add-ons for uh, that you're going to manage. So from this view, you can search the uh, marketplace, the JIRA marketplace, and I'm just going to search for Octane, and it'll pop up right here, ALM Octane Quality Plugin. And you'll first choose to install it if you haven't already, otherwise you'll manage it. And you'll see it here. You first need to configure the space with your URL, and there's a sample that tells you what to what extent uh, you'll need to uh, add the URL there. You'll also add in that client and ID secret that you just created for the JIRA plugin. Um, use this particular um, pair for this setup. Once you see that it's saved successfully, you can come in and tell it now that you want to point to a specific workspace in your Octane instance. 
These will show up as basically drop down fields that you can select from and you'll want to tell it that key field that you added, so the JIRA key UDF. Um, that's how it knows how to link the items in JIRA to your items in Octane. And then of course the types that we're syncing. All right, once this is done, we'll come in to connect. So this is where we're going to configure the data flow. We'll need a data source for both JIRA and Octane. So in JIRA, uh, we'll say create a new data source and we'll put in information like the URL, username, password, click next. And if that information was correct, you'll get a drop down to choose a sample project. And this should be a project that's representative of the ones you're going to be synchronizing field wise, configuration wise. Here you'll see all the different types that are available to sync, including your custom types. If you add this after you created a data type, you may need to come in after the fact and say, um, go ahead and add it to the list. We'll do the exact same thing for Octane. So again, URL, um, client ID, and secret. This will be using the connect client ID and secret using space admin that we saw before. And if those are correct, hit next, and you should get drop downs for the following items, choosing space, um, workspace, and default release. And then just like with the JIRA data source, you'll see the types. All right, now we'll go into connections and actually tell it how we want the two different systems to synchronize. So I'll come in and create a new connection. I'm going to call it Octane JIRA Demo. And I'm going to tell it which of those two data sources to use. So I'm using my Octane data source that I just configured and my JIRA data source. And I'll say let's sync every minute. The next step we'll hit, we'll hit next is types and fields you'll see at the top. So this is where I'm going to tell it what fields and what types in JIRA map to what fields and what types in Octane. So I'm mapping stories to stories, bugs in JIRA to defects in Octane, and documentation bugs to defects. Notice the direction as well. So the arrows indicate which side creates it. So in this case, I'm creating stories from JIRA to Octane, but the fields can all be updated from Octane except the JIRA key. Um, where the other items like defects can be created on either side. We also need to map values. So for things like phase and status, priority, severity, uh, like in this example, I'll need to choose what value on the JIRA side maps to what value on the Octane side. And then we'll repeat this process for um, bugs and documentation bugs. Now, in this case, because we're syncing two JIRA types to a single Octane type of defect, we'll need to put in some criteria so that Octane knows which direction to sort it if it's going the other way. So I'm going to use the Octane sync criteria and add in a, um, a child item that says um, match anything in bug to that list of defect types as bug. And for documentation, I'll do the exact same thing except I'll say anything coming from this type should set that list, the defect type list, to documentation bug. And again, mind the list values. Anything like, um, in this case, status phase will need to be mapped so it knows what values you'd like to have align. And then you can close those out. At this point, you can say next, and you're on the last step, projects. So this is where I'll tell it which of my JIRA projects map to which of my Octane projects. And I may have multiple JIRA projects mapping to a single workspace. Um, that's no problem. You just need to account for that in your criteria for how that information is synchronized. You can save that. And now this will be ready to run. Before we kick it off, notice some things at the bottom. You can see what exactly we're mapping, which directions. You can see any connection messages that may come up as well as charts to shows you how much volume you've had, um, how frequently it's synchronizing. And the audit will show you specifically what data has synchronized in both endpoint systems in each iteration, basically. So this was on a previous iteration. At this point, I will come up to the connection, and I'm just going to go ahead and start it up. You can also choose to do a run one iteration, which just does one pass through. So let's start back in JIRA, go to my project, now just as a regular user. Here are all of my existing items. And let's go ahead and create a new one. So we'll make a new story as a sample to start with to test this out. Just give it a name. Story 4, I'll note that it's created in JIRA. 
and I'll call out this is for our, um, video so that we'll see it more easily on the other side. Notice now on the right, because we added that plugin, it knows that it's tied to Octane um, for test coverage, but we haven't assigned any tests to this yet in Octane yet. So um, once we go over to Octane now as a normal user, um, we should see this story show up um, very shortly. And at that point, we can't assign tests to it. So looking at my backlog items, just refresh my view here. A couple things to point out. Um, so we'll create a new item really quickly first to go back the other way. Let's create a new defect since I have this set up to go either way. We'll create a new defect in Octane. Again, for our demo video, to call it out. Let's give it a severity. And I will choose a type here. So again, because we put in that criteria, it will know based on the type that I pick here, which type to create in JIRA. So I'll say this is a documentation bug and I'll give it a quick description here broken testing and I'll add it all right so there's our new item at the top all right now um, going down let's find the story that we created so it's come across from Jira our story four and it's got a Jira ID let's open this guy up couple things we'll do in here. Let's add a description. So remember I set it so I can update things about this item from Octane. And I'll add some tests. So we'll add these in. Be good. And back on the details, I've got test coverage now, as you can see. And I'm going to actually update the status as well. So I'm going to say it's now in progress. So that will also show up back in JIRA. Here's our defect. And it's new. That's good. All right. So now when we go back to JIRA, see what it looked like before. When I refresh, a couple of things are going to happen. One is that story is going to be updated. Remember, we updated the description in Octane. And we assigned tests to it. So now, as someone working in JIRA, I can see the status of um, the uh, story as it's been worked on in Octane from the QA team. I can also take a look at that defect I created in Octane that's now been um, added to JIRA and it will go through the normal workflow. So maybe as a developer, I get this defect uh, from the JIRA perspective. I'm going to open it up. I see any details. Um, and I'll now say it's in progress, for example. So now as the person back in Octane who opened that incident, remember it was new a minute ago because I opened that new defect, I'm just going to refresh my view, and so now I can see someone in JIRA has picked it up, um, and it's now open. And again, you may be thinking a lot of other fields, maybe story points or priority, uh, but gives, this gives you the idea. All those fields would be um, mapped and updating according, mapped and updated accordingly. So again, we've just looked at two different optional components. One is JIRA using Connect Core to synchronize with Octane, as well as the quality plugin for JIRA with Octane. Thanks for joining us.